running you through a few tips and tricks on how to catch impoundment barrel on lures. Um, just firstly, a little bit of um, um, history on myself. I've fished probably over 140 two-day comps, um, the ABTs, uh, Barra Nationals up on the Daly River in the Territory, uh, the Invitational up at Proserpine Dam. So I'm just going to run you through a few um, places and, and tips and stuff that I use to catch barra. First of all, we're going to be talking about the weed. Like there's sections in the dam, so I'm going to break it up into the weed, the edges of the weed, and the deeper areas, points, and gullies and stuff. So stay tuned and we'll go through all the The first area in the impoundments we're going to be covering is the shallows and structure. So in the shallows, any structure can be the weed beds, can be laid down timber, trees, water lilies, anything that those fish can go in and a lot of times they use that weed and trees and stuff for protection, for shelter, the food's in there, somewhere for them to rest. So if we want to catch the fish in there we have to go and chase those fish. So now we're going to cover the lures that we're going to use to target these fish in those areas. The first section we're going to cover is the surface. So these are lures that just um, are worked over the top of the weed if there's any water over the weed or just under the weed. So the first one I'm going to grab is the Tango Dancer. This is the walk the dog, throw it out and little twitches with your rod so that the lure just walks backwards and forwards like that. Probably do four or five then pause it four or five again and keep working over the top of the weed so this won't get snagged in the weed because it's going over the surface of the weed. The other lures are the Rapala poppers, skitter pops, just all these are is bloop bloop, just so the cup foot the cup of the lure just pushes the water forward and makes noise. But always remember the pause. You don't want to work these lures too too quickly. You want to take your time when you're fishing these lures. Even the little rooster pops, the halcos, anything that makes noise on top of the water, the fish are going to come up and grab it. And the bone hover jets. The good thing about this, you can walk the dog with it, but it's got little fins on the back that you can pull out and it becomes a prop bait. So it's like a fizzer, so it makes a little bit more noise. So they're all the lures on top of the water. The other type of lures that you can use are frogs. There's a few different ones. We have the Z-Man hard leg frogs. What you require is a worm hook in them. So you place a worm hook in there so they become weedless, throw them out over the weed and you just have a steady retrieve and these little legs flutter along and just make noise on top of the water. So these are more a consistent throw them out, work them over the surface. Um, and the um, noisy flappers, they go really well too. So the Kitek noisy flappers, they make a lot of noise in the water so the barrows are looking up and they'll hit these presentations. Rightio, so we've covered that top section. The other section is just under the water a little bit. So over the top of the weed, you've got little pockets of weed and little holes in that. So you can run stuff. If you can see like a meter of water over clear over the weed, clear water, you can run stuff like your gold bombers. They work really well. That's just a twitch pause retrieve. Your B-52s is a legendary lure here in Australia, twitch that over the top of the weed. As long as you've got enough water so your lure's not getting caught in the weed. The Junior B52, they're just a bit of a smaller profile. Sometimes the barrels will eat a smaller lure because that's the prey size that they're eating in the weed. And your Rapala X wraps in various sizes. These are a really good lure. Twitch, twitch, pause, same sort of thing. Just keep it. You don't want to be too aggressive with these type of lures. And then you get the stuff like your um, Xerix. Because they're weedless, you can just roll them over top of the weed. So they're an ideal lure to use. Right now, the next section or area of the dam we're going to cover is the edge of the weed. So we've got structure, weed. Now it grows to about 15 feet deep or it can be less. And then it drops and then you've got clear water. So you've got clear 
10, 15, 20 feet of water on a weed edge. So now we're going to be fishing the edge of that weed. So the best lures for that are stuff like um, the Zeric fish traps. Anchor off the weed edge, throw it out, let it sink down that weed edge till it hits the bottom and then hop it back to your boat. But this is throw it up on the edge of the weed, wind fast, drop it over the edge, then hop it back. So this is covering all the barra because they push the bait up against the weed to feed on it. Other lures that you can try in that area are your slick rigs. These are legendary lures for barra. Throw them up on the weed, burn them over the top of the weed when you get near the edge, stop your lure. This will swim down to the bottom and then just slow roll it back to the boat. So anything you've got to remember that those barra next to that weed edge are going to be pushed bait up against it and feeding them normally on the bottom. So remember off the weed edge, drop it down and then fish that bottom area. Rightio, the next area we're going to be covering are points. That's where the water, like a point is where you can see where the ridge of the lands come down into the water or where the point of a weed, where the weed finishes or any area like that. Because it goes down on an angle, the bottom, and you've got the weed, if, if the fish want to come around one bay into the next bay, they've got to come out of the deeper water and go up into the shallows and over into the next bay. So what you do, you anchor your boat off those points, so you're throwing up into the shallows and bringing your lure out. So good lures to use there are still the same. Some of these change over are your slick rigs. Throw them out, let them sink to the bottom and roll them back. Um, the Western Ricky the Roach, that um, rusty perch color is a really good color to use. We've got the Lucky Craft. The deeper, the bigger the bib, the deeper they dive. You just got to work what area. And sometimes the fish want different profile lures. Reliable jackal squirrels. We've got the live mullets and your transams, any of that sort of stuff. Plus weedless. You can still run these weedless hooks even if you're not in the weed in your big plastics, just slowly roll them out. Your fish traps, any of your Zarek products, all those sort of things. Yeah, you throw up, wind them out, because the fish, and that sort of fishing, you've got to wait for the fish to come around because when that fish wants to change from one bay to another bay, you just got to intersect that fish as he's coming around that bay. So points are areas where you sit on them for a while and just cast in the same spot and sooner or later you'll catch something. Right here, another productive um, way of catching fish on lures and impoundments is trolling. So I'll just run you through some of the lures that I use to troll. Um, some of the times I find a lot of the fish are in that top 10 feet of water. They come up to feed, so they're easier to catch in that top layer of water than they are right on the bottom. So the lures that I'd be using out there would be the old classic in a 10 plus or 15 plus lots of noise troll them around the rock bars the points over those points any structure any gullies anything you can find on your sounder once you find fish troll one way through them or turn around troll back the other way and just work out which way the fish want to eat you've got the reedy's judge or a good lure you've got the tango dancer in the zarek we've got the rmgs and even sometimes different size lures. So you could run a jackal or even a, a lucky craft. Sometimes even run a smaller lure, you could get more bites. Just the fish will tell you what they want. So just mix it up and have fun. Another area that we're just going to cover is big lures. So sometimes it doesn't hurt to throw something really big around, or even if you want to, you can troll it around. So the lures sometimes to see if that's what they're eating, they could be eating big bait of uh, stuff like the big mollocks, the seven and a half mollocks. We've got the Zeric um, flat shad in, you can get these up to nine inch. Even glide bait sometimes, Mollex glide bait. We've got the Kitex in the seven and 7.8 inch. Big lures like that. Anything big, just roll it around and see, because sometimes you can get a big fish on a big lure or you can get a little fish on a big lure. But when they're eating big baits, sometimes these sort of big baits will get you a fish. And the last thing, I always run a little bit of dipping dye on the tail of my plastics. It just gives that fish a little bit of different taste. So something worth trying too is a little bit of um, scent. Right here, if you're in the Mackay area, our local dam, Kinchin, fishes really well. It's a good trolling dam. There's not a lot of trees. It's all weed and edges. 
So that's a really good dam to fish close to town. We've got Timber Dam up at Pinnacle. It's, it's got a lot of big bower in it, plus Peter Faust Dam, which is a legendary dam. Um, good times to target these fish are pretty well from now on. As soon as winter finishes, the fish want to feed up to, so they can get in condition to spawn. Even though they don't breed in the dams, they still want to spawn. So good time now right through summer is a good time to chase them. Tide changes is a good time, dusk and dawn after dark till about 11 o'clock at night a good all good times fish come out of those weed areas to feed so that's a peak time but like always with barra you can catch them any time any day of the week so just go out have fun mix it up and hope you catch a barra